There were a handful of years during my childhood where my parents didn't want me playing video games because they thought that they were quote, rotting my brain. So in an attempt to prevent my God-fearing eyeballs from witnessing the horrors of Mortal Kombat, Grand Theft Auto, and fucking Kirby Air Ride, they banned video games in our household. So by the power invested in the father, the son, and the holy shit, I played a fuck ton of Flash games. I'm talking mini clip. I'm talking addictinggames.com. I'm talking coolmathgames.com. And whenever I knew my parents weren't gonna walk into the room, anyone there? No, nope. okay. I'm typing out the words newgrounds.com. No console, no problem. You got a computer with a decent internet connection? Go ahead and say, I'll show them pay to some flash games. Or maybe you got a computer with a dial up connection, but also four hours to spare. Say, I'll show them you. I, I says it to the flash games. I says, I'll show them you. To my young and beautiful, dumb brain, this was the greatest all you can eat buffet of every genre I could imagine or not imagine. I was not aware that topical George Bush shooters would be so fun, but all in favor of getting W back in office so we could have more of these say I. On the one side of the Flash game spectrum, you had a bunch of crappy games that just copied pre-existing gameplay formulas, but in a real dog shit type of way. But on the other side of the Flash game spectrum, you had games that were wholly unique to the Flash game medium and turned weird new concepts into addicting games.com that you would never anticipate to be so goddamn fun. You got shit like Interactive Buddy, a game about interacting with your buddy. The Impossible Quiz, an interactive puzzler where you gotta think outside the box and literally move the cursor outside of the box. Internet Explorer definitely had an identity crisis with this one. Bowman, a stupid simple game that brilliantly uses the mouse to aim your bow and you can even play this shit in versus mode. What the f who gives a crud if I don't have a console mom? Me and Ricky are playing Bowman till we die. Or whenever his mom comes to pick him up at 8.30. Obviously, whichever one comes first. The best Flash games weren't always flashy, pun intended, but were simple, stripped down, and relied mostly on just how fun the core gameplay idea could be. Like a game where you only use a single input to control a friggin' helicopter that is so goddamn addicting, games.com, that you play it deep into your high school years because you found out it was one of the few game sites that wasn't blocked by the school's firewall, class of 2013, bison, let's roll. Or a game where you're a friggin' monkey throwing ninja assassin blades at a bunch of balloons. Or a game where you're launching a fucking kitten out of a cannon. Jesus Christ, this game is definitely rated R for really cool. And this isn't to say that there weren't incredibly polished and pretty flash games like Fancy Pants Adventures or Crimson Room, because there definitely were. But I'm just saying that, you know, obviously Line Rider doesn't have as many polygons and shader cortex values and hacked mainframes as other games that came out in 2006. But which one of these did I play more? Line Rider or Oblivion? Uh, yeah, Line Rider, duh. Also, I didn't have an Xbox 360 or a computer powerful enough to play Oblivion, so, but I would have played Line Rider anyway, so get off my back, ow! You're hurting, you're hurting me, ow, ow! But even when you compare some Flash games to their console competitors, it's still super inspiring and impressive as spit to see what some people made. Because in the history of video games, few things have given independent hot boys and gamer girls the tools to create and share something totally unique, like Macromedia Flash did. And guess what, stinky butt? Sorry, a lot of the Flash, a lot of the best Flash games ended up turning into super successful console versions as well. Shit like VVVVVV, Super Meat Boy, Trials. All of these games proved that they had solid enough game design to hang with the big boys, even though they started out as just dinky Flash games. But naturally, things change. The internet changes. My t-shirt just changed, and the heyday of Flash games games naturally came to an end because something else became much more accessible and commonplace mobile games. And this isn't necessarily a sad or bad thing, because the short form, pick up and play nature of most Flash games fits the mobile platform perfectly. Here's a fun riddle for you. What's the biggest difference between Copter and Flappy Bird? Jack shit! Cannibalt was a Flash game that played a key role in establishing the endless runner genre. And guess what? Cannibalt plays amazing on mobile. And what's one of the most popular genres for mobile games? It's endless runner, oh my god! Do you get it yet? Bejeweled, Bloons Tower Defense, all 
the friggin' dirt bike games. That one game that's single-handedly responsible for like a billion different YouTuber Let's Plays success on YouTube. I, I think it's called like Cheery Chariots or so. Oh, oh, Happy Wheels, yeah. Happy Wheels, all of these games slay on mobile. If you go on addictinggames.com right now to play some of those classic Flash games, I guarantee you will see some ads for mobile games. Because unlike all of us 20-somethings who had limited internet access in our youth, but would play Flash games anytime we got to use a computer at home, or the library, or the school computer lab, kids of today have constant internet access on their smartphones, so naturally the focus would shift to the app store, and not my friend John Paul's house out of town, where he had a dial-up connection and we had to wait like two hours just to watch the fucking Star Wars rap on Albino Black Sheep. And although this is the natural progression and smartphones are amazing and convenient, you're never going to see Bush Shootout on the App Store. With mobile games come mobile game regulations and mobile game publishers who just want to microtransact your mobile game nuts off. And as amazing as gaming is right now, with everything that's possible, it's just not quite the same as the early wild wild west days of the internet where people just created and made stuff for the fuck of it because it was new and exciting and fun to park a car into an empty spot. Why the fuck did I play so many parking games? Flash gave anyone, professional or amateur, the tools and platform to create whatever the fuck they wanted, whether it be a video of a strawberry teasing a baby, or super well-made innovative video games that allowed people to create and share and laugh their ass off, all within the confines of an internet browser. Thank you, Mr. John Flash, for inventing Flash games. Thank you to whoever made Bush shoot out, and thank you for watching my video. I will see you next time. I'm so hot. I, this shirt is a wet rag. It's so fucking hot in this room. Madari Buns of Steel, Goop, Goblin, Benny G, Reese, Mary, Weather, Brown, and Demon JD, Taco Mibble, Frank Boyer, and Matthew Penny, yes, Joseph, the Machinsky Man of Freedom, Jesus, Old Billy, Freckle Face, and Read the Little Babe, Gavin Hunter, aka Double Man Dave, Joseph Lima, Coffee, Dead Pixel, Tislev, Yo, Camp Town, Jones, Mr. Invisible, Alfie, Fonzo, LR Ho, Ginger Torpedo, King Clucky, Big Daddy Yo, from Nebraska Yo, Jake Smith, Steli, Vina, Mini Yo, Zero Young Girl, Kakavonski, Jerry Ford, Gangster Baby Yo, Giovanni, Nash, and W, I'm really ready. Louis, please, Daddy, Espinosa, Alternate History of Aaron Jacobs, Levi Newell, Michael King, Edward III, Eric Domniski, Papa Slizzy, Nacro, Text, Binary Bird, Dylan Petruska, Immortal Sushi, Morgy Jinx, Baby Blue Butter, Lemon Loaf, and Oda Lip, Boo, Austin, Ah, 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 Austin, Drown Me, Drown Me, Freezer Van B, Butter Bean, Nana's Chris Mitchell, and Uncle Bean Bag, James Mouse, and Rob Wayne Wright, playing fucking freeze tag. God bless the troops. Thanks for supporting him. <laughs> <laughs>